coordinator for NASA Value Point, and I'd like to welcome you today to the uh, Managed Print Services State Kickoff Webinar. Terry Revelo is our lead for this contract, and she's got a great, a great presentation in store for you. Just a couple of housekeeping items before we get started. Um, we are recording today's webinar, and it will be available up on the NASA Value Point website a little later on today along with the PowerPoint presentation that you're going to see as well. If you're in a, I'm actually just going to ask everybody to mute your phones. Um, that way it cuts down on any background noise that uh, may interrupt the call. And also, if you have to step away from your phone, please ensure and use the mute button. Do not put us on hold. Uh, a lot of state systems have on hold music, but it kind of uh, interrupts the webinar as we try to do that. So with that, I'm going to turn the uh, reins over to Terry Ruffalo from the state of New Mexico, and she's going to talk to us about the brand new management services agreement. So Terry, it's all yours. Hi, and I'm probably going to need some information that Tim just said, but my name is Terry Ruffalo, and today we'll be going to the managed print services procurement, which New Mexico, the General Services Department, State Purchasing Division, goes second time leading the specific procurement. So the sourcing team. Um, included Linda Polk representing the state of Alaska. And Tim, you can go ahead and change the next slide. So Linda Polk represented the state of Alaska. Shannon Berry during this represented the state of Nevada. And as most of you probably already know, Shannon has joined the NASBO value team. Neva Beckham and Brianne Aggers um, represented the state of Washington. And Deborah Seiss and myself represented the state of New Mexico. Our NASBO value point coordinator was Tim Hay. So the purpose of um, MPS, Managed Print Services, is to manage printing equipment, supplies, services, and overall management of the print fleet and provide multi-vendor support and maintenance. Placement of the equipment may occur during the term of this contract. However, the contractor shall not charge for the cost of the equipment. Only the cost of the MPS, Managed Print Services, are allowed. The contractor is responsible for removal of placed equipment at the agent. The information regarding the placement of the equipment can be found in the master agreements and in the amendment number three of the RFP. Um, there are exclusions in this procurement and are listed in the master agreements as well. Those exclusions are as follows. Leasing, renting, and purchasing of the equipment is not allowed from the contractor throughout the term of this contract. Now, there are, three main, there are three main components that make up the scope of services, the, the MPS base service, the quick charges, and the value-added services. The value-added services do not have to be procured. So all services included in the base components are not to exceed a maximum monthly base rate. However, base rates may be negotiated at a lower rate based on the MPS components requested. The base components are listed on this slide, which I will highlight for you today, but you can, um, but can be found in, the, in more detail in the master agreements and Amendment 3 of the RFP. So the first one we'll talk about is the consulting and project management. Consulting and project management services are considered services that help organizations improve their print performance, development of plans and schedules for improvement, change management, technology implementation, and strategy development. The next one is assessments, which include an initial no-cost assessment. The purpose of, um, excuse me, I'm sorry, an initial uh, assessment does not guarantee the awarded contractor a procuring agent. There is no cost. This no-cost assessment may occur as a point, as a part of the contractor's offer for management services, or may occur after the contract award. Monitor and manage. Um, procuring agency's fleet. This component includes ongoing assessments. Contractor must provide a regular ongoing assessment to evaluate the procuring agency's identified objectives outlined in the initial assessment. The ongoing assessments shall include but not limited to continuous process improvement and business reviews such as device utilization, fleet performance, cost saving opportunities, department or site usage, spend, consumables, cons remote management, service levels, etc. 
The frequencies of the ongoing assessments will be either on a quarterly or semi-annual basis and will be identified in the participating in addendums. Service level agreements, reporting, and invoicing. At a minimum, the following reports will be required to ensure SLA compliance and support, device performance, device inventory detail, help desk call detail, I'm sorry, help desk call log detail, incident detail per device, meter volume metrics, consumable spend and detail, line item billing detail, and total output of each device. Additional reports may be required and addressed at the participating agency level. Software. The software includes device management software to monitor and manage the print devices in an environment discovery and design software to analyze and plan the change required in implementing MPS. Security services such as intrusion detection, device security, and other services. Next, we'll be talking about implementation. The typical implementation plan should include analysis, assessment, and planning. How analysis, assessment, and planning come together for delivery of recommended solutions to meet the procuring agency's goals. Training. Initial and ongoing training um, can uh, are going excuse me, I'm sorry, initial and ongoing training web-based, on-site, and one-on-one. -on -one. Next is change management includes add changes to accurately monitor the management environment. Remember, MPS is, is not in occur. Help desk and adequate service representat representatives will be available during, during the procuring agency's regular business hours. Addressing and resolve customer problems and issues, expected response times, after initial <coughs> help desk contact, timelines, and escalation measures to resolution. Again, master agreements and amendment three of the RFP. Service, uh, scope of work services. <coughs> um, continue with the second, which is click charges. The click charges are set up by pages per minute and by device type. Prices quoted by the contractor Contractor or original equipment manufacturer, OEM supplies. Um, the current agency may choose to use compatible supplies at a The scope of services continue with value added services. Value added services. Tim, go ahead and change the next slide, please. I did, Terry. It may just be a little thanks. slow to catch up. Okay, thanks. So the value added services are not required. They very contractors limited to the scope of MPS procurement. So the RFP process. The RFP of 2015 and a pre-proposal conference was held August 24th of 2015. And I'll pause just to have the slides catch up. <coughs> Great, thanks. Amendment, um, the RFP amendments, there were four amendments. Two amendments um, included um, adding the participating states and the terms and the closing date for the RFP was October 14th of 2015. We received nine proposal responses and master agreements. Um, we have awarded three master agreements already. Um, term of the contracts are April 15th, 2016 through April 14th, 2017 in one-year increments, so the, there's three additional one-year terms after the initial term has, expires on April 14, 2017. But um, the term cannot exceed four years. So there are, like I said before, there are currently awarded, there are currently three um, awards in New Mexico, and New Mexico is still negotiating the fourth. So we anticipate that there will be four awarded contractors. Can you say who the fourth one no, Might be. not yet, not yet. Okay. So the evaluation criteria. Mexico has two mandatory documents uh, that are included in all RFPs, and you will see them there at the top of the slides. They are the signed con campaign contribution disclosure form and the letter of transmittal. These are pass-fail. The sourcing team created the third mandatory document, which is also pass-fail, and that was the offer's profile. 
The scoreable requirements has a total of 100 points, 100 possible points. The first being the business requirements. And this includes some sub um, some sub requirements which included uh, managed service, customer service, data security, and financial stability. Um, there were a total, um, in total they were worth 200, um, 20 points. The slide shows the possible um, points for each sub requirement under the business. The second is the technical requirements. This listed the scope of work, which was outlined earlier in the, in the presentation and can be found in the master agreement and amendment three of the RFP. The possible points available, available for the technical requirements were 50 points. New Mexico highly recommends 30% for cost, so of co cost, of course, was the third and final scorable um, criteria. Again, so if you need more details regarding the evaluation criteria, please see the original RFP, and that would be section 5.4. We're on next to the evaluation results. Listed on the slide is the evaluation results for the top four recommended um, contractors or vendors um, from the sourcing team. As stated before, three of the four recommended contractors have been awarded, and since negotiations are still ongoing, are still occurring, it is blacked out. So you can see that the total pop points for all of them, and you can see where each one of them um, scored. So there will be a subtotal for the technical total, and then of course the cost, and then the total points awarded to each one of these events. So all offers were afforded the opportunity to clarify their cost response. Two, um, pro two uh, proposals were found non-responsive. Non of those two offers, one stated they could not provide an updated response without being afforded the opportunity to, to clarify their cost response. The second offer was deemed non-responsive non because they could, not, they could only provide their higher and devices and the value added services and they couldn't provide them in the managed um, in the main components of the uh, of the MPS. Sorry. So the contracts were awarded as I mentioned earlier um, were awarded on April 15th 2016 to three of the four recommended offers. I do have a chart listed and the contract numbers listed for each contractor. So for instance, contractor one, which is Conica Minolta, their contract number is 40-00014-000123-AA. Um, so um, the contact information is Kimberly Talbot and her address and her phone number is shown. So is Lexmarks with Zachary Jones and so is uh, Pacific Office Automation with Jeffrey Simmons. Um, changes from the previous contracts. In the previous contracts, there weren't specific components for MPS, and the cost structure was cost was on um, cost per copy. This structure made it difficult difficult to determine what services were allowed to be procured. This new contract identifies common services in MPS for a monthly structured fee. Cost per copy and value added services uh, vary and can be found in each master's, each contractor's master agreement. So getting started, um, you select a contractor, complete, RS, complete the participating in the process, and contractor will work with each of the state or to establish I'm sorry, to establish the required MPS services and cost at or below the awarded costs. All services included in the base components are not to exceed maximum monthly base rates. However, base rates may be negotiated at a lower rate based on the MPS components requested. And contractors cannot provide leasing, renting, or purchasing equipment um, throughout the term of this contract. And remember that there is an initial no-cost assessment. Carrie? Yeah? Or, or did you, just to clarify, did you say that all the master agreements are executed with the three awarded vendors that you mentioned? 
That's correct. And are they posted on the NASA site? I can check for you really yeah, quick. Yes, they are. The, 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 the three awarded management services providers are available on the NASA Value Point website. Um, and, and the sample participating attendants are out there. So you could stay to get started you know, negotiating TAs with those three awarded ones right now. Oh, that's perfect. That was going to be my next question. Thank you, Tim. Okay. <clears throat> so just become familiar with the definitions i.e. the quick charges, the maintenance and support, owned equipment, placed equipment. We put those in Amendment 4. We tried to assist and guide the procuring entities the best we could with, no, with the definitions and, want, um, and what is allowed within them. So just remember, just become very familiar. If you have any questions, you always feel free to give them a call. The contractors may place the equipment um, and will cover the cost of the equipment throughout the monthly click charges and the NPS services through the NPS basic monthly charge. The participating entity will be able to use the equipment during the NPS engagement but will not own, lease, or rent the equipment. The contractor will remove the placed equipment at the end of the NPS. And uh, sorry, real quick, can I ask a question, or Tim, would you prefer that we wait until the end? This wait till the end, if we could, folks. Okay. Uh, th that was the end of the presentation. So please feel free to ask any questions. So, so if you have a couple of quick questions, we do need to uh, cover the participating addendum process quickly. But what's what's your one question you have? Uh, so this is Nikki from the state of Colorado. My question is. Did the um, proposals provide base monthly charges with equipment and base monthly charges without equipment? No, they didn't. It was just base monthly charges. Okay, so if those are C contractor can exceed them, wouldn't they have to exceed them if they're going to be including equipment and placing it out at the customer's location? No, because the cost of the equipment is going to be in the monthly click charge. Uh, and, and they and they quoted the monthly quick click charge in their proposal. Yes, they did. Okay, so basically those monthly click cart click charges do include equipment then, if equipment is placed. Well, I don't. Hold on, let me let me think. Um, the monthly click click charges in the amendments, we did let them know that where the equipment should be placed in the and the equipment should be placed in the monthly click charges. So, if you read the amendment, yes, those quick charges should include the equipment. And, and Terry, isn't it true that as ceiling prices, if you're not going to have equipment provided by the contractor, those, those quick rates and those monthly base rates can be negotiated lower? That is correct. Okay, so the, the rates that are provided do do include um, equipment, and if the customer does not have equipment placed at their location, then they'll negotiate lower rates with contractors? That's correct. But the definitions, the equip they cannot, the, the contractors cannot charge for the base of the equipment in the monthly basis rate. And that um, equipment can only be charged in the monthly click charges, and of course the NPS services, the monthly base rate for the, for the NPS services. And Terry, isn't it also true that if they place equipment and include the value of that equipment in the click rate, that they can't do a separate line item for that value of that equipment? That is correct. Okay. Okay, let me just move on uh, to talk quickly about the participating in the process. And then we'll uh, take some more questions at the end. So for those of you who aren't familiar with uh, how the participating and then the process works, I'm just going to quickly touch on this. Um, as you may be aware, uh, NASPO uh, has executed a cooperative, a cooperative memorandum of agreement with all 50 states in the District of Columbia. And this allows all of these states in the U.S. territories in the district to participate with any of our NASPO value point master agreements. We have approximately 53, 54 uh, portfolios available right now, and they're all available to the states and participating entities through that cooperative memorandum of agreement. There's three options uh, with uh, 
uh, the management services agreements. Uh, option one is the one we prefer the most, and it's where a state will execute a participating addendum for the entire state, as well as all political subdivisions within that state. Um, sometimes a state may, may, may not be able to participate in one of our master agreements, but they may not have any issues with political divisions participating. In that case, we would then encourage option number two, where a state will sign a participating agenda for non-state entity use or just only for the political subdivisions within that state. And the third option is where a state chooses not to execute a participating addendum for, uh, for whatever reason they may have. Uh, but that doesn't mean that the political subdivisions can't still access our agreements, but we first have to do a check-in process with the chief procurement officer just to make sure that they don't have any objections with the political subdivision executing their own participating agenda in that state. And the reason why we do this is I mentioned that cooperative memorandum of agreement just a few minutes ago. Um, we are a state-owned and operated cooperative, and we are not going to compete against any in-state purchasing cooperatives. So if a state has an existing management services ag agreement out there, their own, their own contract, and they're trying to drive spend to that agreement, they will probably want, don't want us allowing a political subdivision to execute their own participating addendum or, in a sense, compete against their own in-state cooperative agreement. So that's the reason why we have that check-in process with the CPO. You know, usually most of the time, a uh, state chief procurement officer will not have any objections to a political subdivision executing their own PA, but sometimes they do, and if they do, we just have to respect that decision and the caveat that we have uh, with the political subdivision use. So the, uh, the participation steps one and two are in a sense the same. I'm not going to read these verbatim, but it's basically the uh, state will choose who they want to execute a participating addendum with, and uh, they will just negotiate directly with those contractors. Uh, states have the ability to add in additional items into those participating addendums, things like uh, if they have an, their own administration fee or any separate reporting requirements or if they have any unique terms and conditions specific to their state. Uh, neither NASPA Value Point or Terry or the state of New Mexico get involved in your negotiations. We're certainly here to answer any questions you may have, but we don't <laughs> approve the negotiations or review your participating <laughs> addendum before it gets signed. That is all strictly between you and the uh, contractors that you choose. Once uh, your participating addendum is executed with signatures from both parties, then you just need to send in that completed participating addendum to NASPA Value Point at PA at NASPAValuePoint.org. We will then log it and get it posted up on the NASPA Value Point website. Participation opportunity number three is uh, almost the same, except we first have that check-in process with the chief procurement officer. So if there's a political subdivision out there that's interested in using one of our PAs and we verify that the state has not executed the PA, then uh, we'll uh, check in with the CPO and get their uh, hopefully non-objection, and then we'll communicate that back to the participating entity, and we'll use that email as a record of documentation to show that we checked in with the CPO and that they're free to uh, negotiate directly with the contractor. And then once again, the negotiations are directly between the, uh, the entity and the contractor, and then they just send in that completed PA to uh, NASPA Value Point. We have this handy-dandy flowchart on all of our contract portfolios pages on the NASPA Value Point website, and this just kind of outlines the, the the steps involved. Uh, everybody starts here at the green box. Uh, here's the flow for participating states right here, and here's the flow for participating entities with that CPO check-in process. And then they all come to the same point here where it's just the direct negotiation and then sending in that completed PA to NASPA Value Point. Things to remember, we do have sample PAs located on the NASPA Value Point website. We ask everybody to start with that sample PA. Uh, we sometimes still will receive uh, participating addendums from states that may have used something in the past where it still references WISCA or WISCA NASPO um, or old contract numbers. Please always start with the new model participating addendum that we have out on the website. We have one for each of the contractors on the contractor specific webpage and it's personalized to each contractor. Uh, we do maintain all of the participating addendums in our uh, 
uh, file system as well as up on the website. Uh, we will identify all the participating states with the maps on the uh, NASA Value Point website. So as new states uh, participate, the, the map will color in, in blue to show that there's uh, either a, an entity participating in that state. As I mentioned earlier, uh, the lead state and ASPA Value Point did not get involved in those negotiations. And we ask that you only submit completed and negotiated PAs with signatures from both parties to us. Sometimes we get, we're, we're CC'd on in ongoing negotiations, and we don't want to confuse an attachment to that being a completed PA and inadvertently posted on our website. So we ask that you only submit those final negotiated PAs with signatures from both parties to NASA Value Point when they're ready to post. Uh, with that, um, I am the uh, Cooperative Development Coordinator that supports uh, Terry and the Management Services team. However, if you have any questions regarding the PA process or any questions regarding Management Services, there is no wrong door at NASA Value Point. So if you contact Terry and if she's not served or something, she'll contact me or vice versa. If you have like a, a contract interpretation issue or master agreement interpretation issue, Terry is the person that you need to talk with, but if you have a PA process question or a NASA Value Point process question, you can certainly direct those questions to me. And with that, I'll just like to uh, open it up to any further questions that people may have. Tim, can I can I um, interrupt one second? Sure. I did I did find um, an error, which is kind of silly, um, of the contract awards. So the contract um, number that I do have up there is is incorrect. So um, if we can end up just fixing that before it's posted to the website, and so if we can are, go are back. You talk, are you talking in the PowerPoint, Terry? Yes, that's that's correct. Sure, so if you I could just send me an updated send me an updated PowerPoint. I'll be happy to post. The are, one. are they correct on the participating addendum documents? Yes, yes, they're correct there. They're just not correct on my slides. Any other questions? Um, this is Brenda. How are you guys doing? <laughs> it's been a while. Good. I've talked with you. Um, I'm just curious um, how what happens now with the contractors from the previous MPS that are um, I don't want to say ingrained, but are in let's say an agency currently. How? How is this going to work? Do they need to? Does the end user now need to transition to one of these three vendors? Or yes, that would be ideal. But again, um, it depends on the contract and, and what the terms and conditions of that contract is. So for the state of New Mexico, um, if for instance one of those vendors were not awarded this current contract, in that in the current contract that we have with MPS, it does state though that that contract does not expire until and I'm pulling one up now. It says it does. Uh, it says in accordance with the price agreement provisions and by mutual agreement of all parties, the price agreement is extended from September 1st, 2015, until the new contract is awarded, or August 31st, 2016. So the current contract can go um, as far as August 31st, 2016, with those ones that haven't been awarded. So it's Terry. Oh, sorry, Terry. This is Neva. Um, but if an a an agency or a customer has has a statement of work with one of the previous or the current vendors. They have a term probably in their agreement that 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 term of that specific agreement may go beyond August 31st. But when they go at, at the end of that agreement term, then they would have to use the new contract. That's correct, and as I stated, you know, it depends on the contract that was signed with that agency or the procuring entity. So you have to really follow that contract. Um, has the hey. protest period um, been met? I mean, does that make sense? Have you had anybody protest or planning to protest your award, or has that we period of time um, expired? The state did receive some documentation, and the state purchasing agent is in the process of reviewing it. Any other questions? Yeah, this is Stan from Hawaii. I had a question. What is the minimum term and the maximum term 
between the state and the what they contracted for this uh, contract here. Is there a minimum and a max number of months, years? No. Uh, for New Mexico, it is four years. So you a contract for four years, but right. you can't cancel prior to that. Uh, again, it depends on, um, on your participating addendum. So if you do have a cancellation clause, then yes, you can. And I know the master terms and conditions should have some kind of cancellation clause in there as well, if I remember correctly. Um, yeah, the, there, there is a cancellation. Just a reminder that the initial term of this master agreement is only for a year, and then New Mexico does their renewal sort of one-year increment. So, um, so it's a up to a you know a four-year or five-year max term. So the initial first uh -huh. year, within four one-year terms after that. So it is recommended that uh, we should not go beyond the four years when it expires. What I'm saying is, let's say you're two years into the contract and you want to do a contract with vendor A, uh, it should expire concurrently with the expiration date of uh, April 14, 2021? Well, again, it depends on your state's policy. For New Mexico, we can go one year after the um, the participant addendum expires. So it depends on what your, your state policy requires. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Well, I just want to thank everybody for attending today's webinar and learning more about the Management Services Agreement. I also want to Thank uh, Terry Revelo and all the people on the uh, Management Services Sourcing Team uh, for their hard work on uh, on this procurement. This has definitely been a journey for the team. Um, a few road bumps along the way, but uh, uh, they put together and Terry has put together some fantastic agreements that actually, I think, correct a lot of issues that we had in the current agreement. So I hope everybody finds value from these agreements. And um, you're free to start negotiating with those three contractors that we already have available on the website. So with that, just a reminder that this uh, presentation will be posted up on the Nestle Value Point website a little later on today, and um, along with the uh, updated PowerPoint. And with that, I just want to wish you all a great day, and thanks for attending.